Hello and welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel uh, or the video series, whatever, I am turning my uh, totaled 06 Range Rover into, uh, where is it? Over there. An 09 Range Rover. Did I do that right? 06? 09? Right, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so uh, the last video I found out that, well, so I had to go to Charlotte and I had to take this with me and I found out that the uh, headlights are different. So uh, the 06 headlights are not adaptive and these are. So that's why I had the little blinking, well, I think that's why I have the little blinking uh, winning light. God, one of these days, I will use words correctly. So I think that's why I had the blinking warning lights on the dash. And I also had a an airbag sensor warning light on the dash. So um, I found out when I took the headlights apart, and, well, you can just watch the video. I'll, if I figure out how YouTube works, I'll put the link up there. Uh, so, but the, really gotta take my ADHD medicine. Uh, so, ooh, hello camera. Nope, this way, up, down, this way, oh, nope. This way. All right, there we go. Uh, so I figured out um, that the entire headlight housing had to come apart, but I needed to go to Charlotte. So I um, just kind of put the headlight, like I put the wiring harness back in and sealed it up so it wouldn't get wet and then shoved the headlight back in the truck and drove to Charlotte. And I scanned all the codes while I was at the shop, because I own a shop. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before, um, but I own a shop about two and a half hours away from here, which is how I do all this anyway. Um, so I hooked it up and I scanned the codes because I kind of wanted to know how many codes would a salvaged Range Rover have? Um, quite a few. <laughs> there are actually quite a few codes. So uh, this one's going to be a real quick one. Maybe. I don't know. I talk a lot. Uh, but I'm going to show you what codes were in here. I grabbed some pictures of the scanner when I went and I'll show you what messages I found in the Range Rover, because I feel like this is where a lot of people get nervous about buying something like this, either owning a Range Rover in general, or uh, buying a salvage car from someplace like Copart or IAA, Insurance Auto Auctions, which I like better, by the way. Uh, that's maybe a different video for a different time. But uh, let me show you what issues I ran into, and uh, yeah, it's either gonna make you absolutely terrified to ever do this, or, uh, you look at it and be like, that's not so bad, right? Okay, yeah. Whew, I had a lot of coffee today. Yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so hooking up the scanner, uh, it has quite a few codes. I, uh, I don't even know that it's worth counting them. Um, it's somewhere between 10 and 200. Yes. Okay, and keep in mind that I also tried to reset these codes by disconnecting the battery and touching the two cables together, which should have cleared the memory out, but I've also had various parts on and off this vehicle, so I don't exactly remember at which point I had components removed when I uh, tried to start it. So going through this, we're gonna see, um, so right off the bat, airbag. So I did an all system scan on our Snap-on scan tool, and right off the back, airbags. Now, here's something that is not surprising, but so I've got this crash event code in my airbag module, um, and then this invalid data received from the uh, OPDY, uh, OPDS, I think, is that the restraint occupancy class division? Yeah, I don't really know what that is. Invalid data received from the restraints occupancy classification system module. Um, no idea. No idea whatsoever. Um, but exactly what I was expecting. Driver's seat pretensioner deployment circuit open. So uh, absolutely, the airbags went off, the seatbelts deployed, uh, pretension the seatbelt. That is absolutely unexpected, or not unexpected, not unexpected. There you go. Um, and then moving right through these codes, if my computer will work, there we go. So um, now we've got these uh, communication codes. So anytime you see a U code, uh, this is gonna be something in the uh, network. And so a U code communication, um, so lost communication with TCM, lost communication with the transfer case, law invalid data received from the ECM, invalid data received from the TCM, invalid data received from the VDCM. <gasps> Invalid data received from the transfer case control module. <gasps> That's a lot. Um, so I'll tell you what those mean in a second. 
Uh, if we look at the ride level control module, again, invalid data, lost communication, uh, wake up control, plausibility failure, uh, we can keep going. Uh, this is the instrument pack control module, uh, checksum failure. Uh, we've got lost communication with the driver module, uh, invalid data received from the restraint module, now the lighting control module. Here's the other thing that I was a little bit concerned about. Uh, left headlamp power module, right headlamp power module, control module. <sighs> okay, communication. Basically what these are telling me is that I did disconnect the headlights while the battery was still attached because all of these basically say, I don't see a headlight module, so I must have not reset it at some point. So I'm not super worried about these at the moment. Um, now, here's a really interesting one. And this one could still come back and bite me. So see where we see this occupant classification system, crash event storage. So full and locked, deactivated. Um, so keep that in mind, park and brake, lost communication, lost communication, lost communication. Basically, whenever you see a loss of communication or a low voltage code, those a lot of times are stored even though it's a uh, resolved issue. So in other words, the modules lost communication at some point, and then uh, now they're back, hopefully. And I'm pretty sure they're back because this thing actually runs and uh, this would be lit up like uh, the White House Christmas tree if all of these codes were still present. So uh, again, circuit below threshold, vo uh, voltage below threshold, invalid data received, not super concerned about these. Uh, restraint control module, here's the main one. Uh, crash event stored, invalid data, driver's seat pretensioner. Okay. Sometimes when an airbag deploys, the um, supplemental restraint module, the, the thing that controls your airbags and any of the uh, safety systems basically that uh, you know would engage in something like that, some of those modules are only designed to be used once. In other words, once a crash has occurred, they will basically uh, brick the module and it can never be installed in another car ever again. Um, so I'm a little concerned by that because I don't know what those modules cost, but I'm sure it's fairly expensive. Uh, and you're definitely, if you get one, you're absolutely gonna have to have it programmed and calibrated, which is more money. So that's not ideal. Now, for those of you that are do-it-yourselfers at home, you know, you're looking at this and you're thinking like, wow, that's great, Rob the Car Guy. Like, you've got a $6,000 scanner. Like, how am I gonna do this? Um, listen, here's the deal. If you are gonna do this as like a side project and you don't have a full-on scanner that can get access to anything other than engine codes, because I would not have gotten any of this information from a code reader. Um, most shops, if you walk into a shop and basically say, hey, you know, I'll pay you a hundred bucks to give me a report with all of this stuff in here. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to fix all these issues or try to fix all these issues. And then I'm going to bring it back and then have you guys do it again. You might spend a hundred bucks. You might spend a couple hundred dollars. People might kind of work with you. Um, just understand that these guys usually are charging a hundred bucks an hour for their time. And these scan tools are, you know, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars for some of them. Uh, and you have to pay, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars a year to have the software continuously upgraded. So um, it, it is very, very expensive. And so, you know, paying a hundred dollars to get this kind of access is not, um, it's, it's not unreasonable. Um, maybe they'll do it for less, you know, maybe they're just We'll do it for 50 bucks or something. But um, most shops, if you call around, I guarantee you two, three shops, you'll find one that is willing to do this for you. Um, so yes, it is very important to have this information. Uh, steering angle sensor module, um, steering wheel position sensor, uh, internal control module not configured. Uh, these are some really weird codes. Some of these potentially scary. Uh, we're gonna talk about what to do with these in a second. Um, and then the audio control module, um, gosh, I don't know, fiber optic CAN bus signal. Uh, seat climate module, now we're just getting petty. Uh, tire pressure monitor, uh, battery voltage, lost communication with the ICM, lost communication, uh, seat module, um, driver's column, motor, blah, uh, which, you know, because that, um, the seat and the steering wheel will communicate because when you get out of the car, you know, the steering wheel will go up, the seat will move. So they do talk, a lot of these modules cross talk because you would be surprised how many of these modules need to uh, like communicate with other modules. They need to know what one module is doing 
in order to make sure that what they're doing is going to be uh, safe or allowed. Um, so again, in the 19 modules that I detected in this uh, going through here. So the seat module, um, let's see, H hey, HVAC, the HVAC system, no codes. What? Oh man, that's great. Parking assist, uh, codes, um, undocumented codes. So again, the, even this computer is not perfect. Um, and then OBD2, do you see that right there? OBD2 code zero. If I hooked up a generic scan tool to this car, it would have given me nothing, absolutely nothing. OBD2 is the general uh, protocol that basically all over-the-counter scanners use. So all of your code readers, all of your basic DIY ones, most of them are only gonna give you OBD2. Uh, this would have given me nothing. So that wouldn't have been helpful. Um, and then I think that's where we are. So uh, that's a lot. So what do you do when you have something like that? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Uh, if this was a customer's car and they were paying me a couple hundred bucks to try to figure out what was going on with their car, uh, what I would do is exactly this. I would document every single code in the module, which is kind of why I took these pictures. Uh, and then I would just reset everything and see what comes back. Uh, you will spend days chasing your tail um, and then let me let me just show you. So that's exactly what we did. Uh, so we erased all these codes, reset everything, uh, and then re-ran it again. So now uh, engine, good. Transmission, good. Transfer case, good. Brakes, good. Uh, still two airbag codes, unsurprising, because we do have that warning light. Uh, and again, the airbag, uh, invalid data, and the driver uh, seatbelt. Yeah, so that is confirmation that either I have a broken wire or the driver's seatbelt did deploy. Uh, and so we are going to have to take care of that seatbelt uh, to get that airbag light off. Um, you know, ride module is good, instrument pack again, uh, lost communication with the remote driver utility module, missing message, um, invalid data received from the restraint control module. Uh, and then we have got communication of the left actuator, whatever that is, lighting control module front, um, so, and then restraint module, there we go, driver's uh, seatbelt deployed, um, invalid data received, uh, steering's good, parking brake's good again. Um, we still have that parking assist code, which uh, I'm gonna tell you is probably a couple of faulty sensors because I did use the bumper and the parking sensors off of the 06. So uh, I will have something there for that. Uh, and then if we go into the um, airbag module, um, there we go. So there's that data. So that is it. Basically, we reset those codes and uh, those all went away. And there is actually, if I'm thinking, I guess I don't have a picture of it. Somewhere in there I had a picture. Uh, somewhere in there I had the uh, headlight also in there. I must not have taken a picture of that. But I did have a headlight issue because, uh, yes, I, the headlight's not plugged into anything. So we still have a few projects to do. We have got to uh, fix that one headlight. Uh, we've got those airbag codes. Oh, the module. So here's the thing about the supplemental restraint system module. Uh, Range Rover has designed this module to store crash events. Now, a uh, crash event is any time uh, one of the crash sensors basically detects a crash. So it will give you three crash events before it bricks that module and it is totally useless anymore. Um, I don't know how many crash events I have. So one accident could give you three crash events if it's a serious accident. I'm hoping that the side airbags didn't deploy, the seat bags didn't deploy, uh, I had the steering wheel and the knee bag, the passenger airbag didn't deploy. Uh, so I'm hoping I've got one or two. We're gonna see. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get that uh, seatbelt replaced, see if that goes away, and then see what else is stored in there. Uh, we gotta fix the headlight, which is going to be a bigger project than I thought it was gonna be. Parking sensors, we gotta fix the leather, and uh, the sunroof, sunroof, headliner, headliner. Okay, oh yeah, paint. I gotta paint it. That's kind of important. Uh, but we're gonna see if we can get our 09 Range Rover uh, up and running again. So far, it's not been so bad. It is definitely something that you can do 
yourself with minimal effort. I'm feeling pretty good about this project so far. I probably shouldn't have said that. I might get myself in trouble. Appreciate it. If you enjoy these, uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the little bell thing, and I'm going to try to document this as much as I possibly can, and we'll see you on the next one.